Are you stuck? How about unhappy? Join Elena Chapman, author, mentor, and life coach for Magical Moments with Elena as she challenges you to get out of the doldrum and start living your life to the fullest. In just 60 minutes, Elena will help you take control of your life and push you to do the things you never thought you'd do. So get ready to take back your power and celebrate life with Magical Moments featuring Elena Chapman. Welcome to Magical Moments, and I'm your host, Elena Chapman, and yes, oh my gosh, it is so magical, guys, if you just open to it. We're all about that ease and flow in your life. Just breathing, doesn't that feel good? (laughs) Take a deep breath. Breathe in spirit. That's the beginning right there. All right, so this whole show is a magical nugget. And it's a special kind of magical nugget because I think, guys, this is the show that is going to start you on a journey. And you're saying, Elena, oh, come on. I don't need another journey. (laughs) But I'll tell you what. What if I told you this is a journey where every step brings you into this incredible awareness and stuff is not foreign to you. It's just open to you. It's not as hard as you think. And what if I told you you were going to go that way anyway? Why not go with eyes open and make it even better? Yeah? I think that's a win-win. So here we go. I'm talking about today, and it is only me, folks. So sit back and relax. We're going to talk about spectrums of love. What? Yes. Ah, Love, 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 love. Don't we love love? So funny. Uh, When I was a girl, I was not, (laughs) I was not one of them. But I would see these girls, even when I was a counselor at some of the camps, I'd see these girls and they're all with these wedding books planning their wedding. They don't have a groom, by the way. (laughs) They're just planning the wedding. And I used to look at them and I thought, guys, what are you doing? And, and they're saying, well, I just, I just want to build this. What are they doing? They're in love with love. We're in love with that falling, exuberant, electrifying, waking that pulsing vitality of life. Where the grass is greener, the ocean is bluer, the sky is more vast, our blood pulsates with the unity of this vibration of love and goodness. And our eyes are open with this possibility and hope, and we surrender everything to this goodness. Yes, yes, love is to fall down into the bliss It is that intoxicating, invigorating, exciting, all-encompassing feeling. And we love it. (laughs) And then, as my mother says, we wake up. But do we have to? Do we really have to? Yes, this wonderful, electrifying love. This is... One type of love. And this is the falling into that spiral. Notice we say falling. Alan Watts made this observation that I just love. Alan Watts said that the falling is our surrender. It's this just this total surrender into this electrifying, exuberant opportunity pulsating feeling. We just fall into it and we surrender ourselves to another person. Ah, how interesting. We are saying, here I am in all my glory (laughs) and I'm surrendering myself to you. Whoa. And yet when we do that and that person does it to us, It's fireworks. It's frickin' fireworks. That kind of love is the love that builds our lives. 
as, as a person who is spiritual, that love also comes, that wonderful abandonment, but surrender, that vastness, that electrifying, that pulsating also comes as we awaken in our own spirituality. That wonder I always talk about, that magic in life, when you open to that, that's that same kind of love. Some people have that kind of love even when they're dealing with material things such as money. This electrifying, electrical, excuse me, electrical type of love, this, this exciting love can come for anything, not just the romantic. And it is a level of love. It is a spectrum of love, that excitement. I remember when I was... Even, well, of course, falling in love was that. Oh my gosh, yes, it's fun. It's wonderful. It's, it's miraculous. But I also remember when I first came to seeing the wonder of life itself. And oh my gosh, it was that same. I felt my blood coming alive. I felt like I was... I could almost just float. I felt like everything was just possible. I felt like this vastness that, oh my gosh, when the real reality came to me, how connected we all are. I just was, I was in love. I was in love. I was in love with the sky. When Einstein stood out in a field with a violin looking up every morning at that beautiful universe, and has a tear. It is awesome wonder and love. Utter love. Buddha talked about that eternal love. That love that is for all of the earth. All of love is can be intoxicating. It's intoxicating. But how do we keep this love? How do we keep this love in our life? And how do we see the different spe Well, let's, let's, let's review some of the spectrums. I want to back up. I want to talk. Now, is it always intoxicating? There's other spectrums of love. It's funny. I, I have experienced with my mother um, a different kind of love. This is a love that is, um, how should I say, well, it's a healing. And through the healing, the love is this feeling of warmth. It's this feeling of total contentment and deeper understanding that lifts you up into, it's more encompassing. It's more... Um, it's really going to be okay. And it, it's a kind of love that lifts you out of yourself into helping another person. Helping, uh, like for my mom, I had to heal. I had to heal through a lot of our oil vinegar times in our lives, which my mother and I have had. We are extremely extremely oil and vinegar and here I am and she's depending on me now I could hold all those fights accountable in my mind I could be you know if I was the injured soldier I would never experience the type of love I'm able to experience right now I had to do a little bit of work for this one I had to come to well, come to Jesus moment <laughs> with myself and, and understand the past is the past, but let's heal it so that it doesn't re come back in other ways. And in that healing process, while being with my mom, I've seen my mom grow more vulnerable. I've seen my mom's eyes soften. The hardness is gone. I see the unsureness and it's time for me to step up. And when I step up, that's when the love came out. That's a whole nother spectrum of love. 
that's a that's a very deep deep love inside of healing but there are so many spectrums of love there's this love for the child the child that you want the very best for that you brought into this world you want the very best however it's more of a letting go love it is a love where you are you are doing your best to raise this person to be whatever it is that they are supposed to be it is a very give and take all love is a give and take it's just kind of shown more in this relationship we allow it more in this well some of us allow it more in this <laughs> relationship and we give and take and we allow that love to just kind of sometimes observe because you know they're doing their own thing and sometimes we have to step back but we're always there and it's a patient love it's a patient understanding kind of love that you know no matter what they can always come back to you but you're going to let them fly That's another. There are so many spectrums of love in our life. There's even a love, that special love that we have for the people in our life who come and appear as little angels whenever we need. The ones that bring the notes that are encouraging or, or just seem to pop up at our moments when we need them. There's a, that kind of love of thank you. It's a receiving kind of love. All of this is our daily lives. We don't awake to it. We discount it. And the only kind of love we see is that intoxicating, um, romantic love, which has been so distorted in our society. So distorted in so many ways. Yes, it's good. No, it's not. Yes, it's good to be together, but don't do anything. <laughs> don't express it in any kind of ways. Always be suspicious. What is that? You know, sometimes we even discount love. As far as, oh, it's more political than it is. You know, you've got to marry someone in your means, or you have to be with someone in your means, or who's going to help promote you. That's the strategic love planning, I call it. There's no such thing. Love is a freedom. I wanted to bring up the Buddhist. The Buddhist. They have four, four true love, I don't know, qualities. And I want to talk to you because I don't think it's only for the romantic love. I think it's almost for every kind of love in your life. I wanted to, I wanted to bring them to you. Um, the first kind of love they talk about is matre, which is kindness. Kindness. It's the way that you are loved or you love deeper with understanding of who the other person is, who the situation might be. That's a lot of, that's the love of opening yourself to allowing yourself to see the other person, that it's not all about you. It is, it's listening openly, attentively. Now, in a love relationship, oh my gosh, this is, I call this type of love, this kindness, um, a discovery a wonderful discovery of this other person. And when you listen closely, you can start to hear the true them. And this kindness is one of the biggest ways. It's kindness every day that keeps this invigorating, wonderful, hopeful love alive. It's the kindness that we show it's not the demands. It's not the expectation. It's not the, the you should be this, you're the man or you're the woman. 
It's the kindness. It's the listening. It's opening yourself to them. Now, this is any spectrum of love. It's the same with my mom. It's the same with the kids. It's the same with the best friend. It's building love. It's opening yourself above and, and out of your own realm into listening to someone else. It's opening your heart. Kindness. My gosh, it's kindness. Even for people that you see, I don't know, when you get your coffee or when you're in the pharmacy or when you're, it's that kindness. You'll find that if you start to open what they call matre, kindness, you will start to exude kindness. And I dare say, that kindness opens us up to wanting to be in that state of loving. It gives you this feeling of, of wonder and possibility and hope. <laughs> and in this time right now, where so many of us are just maybe, maybe starting to come out of our houses carefully, and we're still trying to be so careful. And we've been told that everybody is infectious. And yeah, probably we are. But to have that kindness, it breaks down the walls inside you. You have to break down that wall inside you in order to show the kindness and as soon as you show that kindness, you see it reciprocated right back because that's energy. You created a void by giving it out and, hey, it has to be filled. And that other person who's been craving kindness then shows it back to you. That is love, guys. And that is what the Buddhists say is one of the first true loves. Isn't that cool? You're not that far away from it. <laughs> the second one, I love this, and I hope, oh, I wrote it down, and I'm trying to make sure I ah, pronounce it correctly. Karuna. I hope I'm right on that. I love this. This is what Buddha says. If we could see the miraculous opening of this singular flower, and what it is, it's compassion and desire it's the ability and the ease we have to help someone else's suffering it is not pushing buttons when someone is upset but instead saying hey i'm here and it's using that kindness to that compassion to open our ears and just be quiet and listen and not try to solve every problem, just being there for them. How many times in relationships do we feel that we have to counteract that suffering or, or sometimes we don't even allow them to suffer? We're too much like, um, no, you have no right to suffer. I have it worse off than you. And then we bring ourselves into the equation. Sometimes it's, oh, I've got it all planned. I remember one time it was, um, I, I had just uh, decided to get divorced. Just decided. And my heart was breaking. And yes, you get that feeling of failure. You get, you know, all those feelings come rushing in. And I was at my parents' house, and I remember um, I woke up in the morning, and my dad knocked on the door, and he came in with a pad of paper. And he said, okay, this is what we're going to do. And in his eyes, he was trying to fix my problem. God love him. But for me, it was like, whoa, wait. He hadn't really sat down to talk to me. He went into a private place, decided, okay. I'm going to take care of this problem. You're going to now do this. You're going to move here. You're going to take a job you hate. You're going to buy this car because it's better than yours. Well, which it wasn't, by the way. And you're going to just start living a whole new life with a whole new everything. And we're going to fix this problem. <laughs> I went, what? And 
I rebelled because that was almost an affront. I hadn't had time. Nobody was listening. Nobody l- eased me. Nobody, nobody lent out a hand and said, hey, okay, let's just, let's just take time to pause right here. My family doesn't pause. <laughs> they don't believe in that pause. I believe in that pause. You got to process it. And, and no one had that deeper understanding to say, oh my gosh, she might be going through a lot of that failure. It's very important. And thus, we, we became a riff instead of a building block. So it's really important in love with our kids, with our, with our true love soulmate, with our parents, with whatever, to even as a teacher, to understand that sometimes our, our greatest gift is to help that person open up as a flower, to be there, to watch that new revelation that's coming into them, to, to not stop its growth, not try to fix it, but to be there as a support and a love. And that's a gift I even had to learn. Like I said, my family was, oh, got to fix it right now, cry later, you fix it. That's, that's how we grew up. So it really took me a long time. And still, sometimes I'm still learning it. It's a very important, wonderful. And then the other one. And I pray I get this. <laughs> Modita. Now, if I pronounce this incorrectly, feel free to let me know. There is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. Whoa! I love this one. I love this one. I'll read that again. This is Buddha. There is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. This is so important. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've met a lot of gentlemen who do it too. So you meet this person and you want to change them. I don't mean to laugh, but that's so funny. <laughs> so, yeah, you find this perfect person, but yeah, got, he's got to change. <laughs> or she's got to change. <laughs> it, oh, God. Um, yeah, no. It, what it is, is, is the happiness. Happiness is probably the most important thing. It is the happiness of being together. It's the happiness... Of, of accepting each other just as you are, accepting all of them. Maybe they're not just like you. Maybe they have beliefs that are different than yours a little bit. Maybe they, but that's what adds to their color. There's something about that that draws you. That's the whole thing. You take that out and then the spice is gone. The, the, the... The difference that intrigued you is gone. So it's being happy with this person that you have chosen. It's being happy with acceptance. Happy with the moments you share that you laugh. Happy with the moments that are just incredible and fun and alive. All that exhilaration, that that pulsating that that high electrical moment that is happiness it's the impromptu going out and and uh, going hiking or getting an ice cream cone or just sharing it's the impromptu meetings it's the the incredible surprise little appearances it's sometimes the planned just excitement of seeing each other again because you're happy with them. And that can happen in all of it, all different kinds of spectrums of love. It can be the happiness of seeing your children come home and seeing their lives just throw, growing and, and just experiencing that wonderful feeling of family again. It can be the 
the happiness to see that the person that you've extended all that understanding and love and healing is thriving or that that relationship is just starting to grow in its warmth and greater understanding. That is the incredible happiness. If we are with a person where everything is a trial, where we find we can't return the messages, or we find that we can't, um, uh, I don't know, we just find that we cannot give ourselves, and we find that there is more strife, more worry, more control in one area or another, more uh, 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 fight over I'm trying to be myself, trying to set a boundary within. That's not happiness. That is not happiness. And it is that happiness that is going to bring you through the tough times. It's the happiness that creates the memories. It's the happiness that gives you the foundation for discovery. So take a look at this. If you're trying to fix someone... Well, number one, you can't fix someone because they don't need fixing. If you're trying to control someone, you got to take a look at yourself. Control is an insecurity. And uh, by the way, after the break, we're going to talk about a very special love, which really precedes all this so-called true love in our lives and cycles. And I also want to cover the very last incredible, I love this last one of the Buddhist love I love this whole concept and we'll continue with the spectrum and how we can bring ourselves alive in this love every day. You're listening to Magical Moments. We will be right back. Thanks for listening. Your weekend continues with Magical Moments featuring Elena Chapman right now. Welcome back to Magical Moments in the land of love, love, love. And it is a world of love, world of incredible love when you open yourself to it. So we talked about three of the Buddha's true love, to have true love. And as I said before, guys, this true love is not just the romantic ooh-la-la love. It's the love in, you know, the love with the kid, the love with the mother, the love with the friend, the love, love, love with the nature, love. Love, all the different spectrums of it. Now, I do want, so we were talking about that incredible happiness, having that happiness. And I'll tell you, that goes for situations too. How many times do we settle for non-love with our situations? We think everything's a challenge. I once listened to a man who was saying, yep, you're going to have challenges. You're going to have obstacles. You go from one obstacle to the next. Oh my gosh. I thought, oh, that's so heavy. (laughs) I had to turn him off. (laughs) If I thought that my life was one hardship after another, another obstacle to get over, another little mountain every time I turn around, (gasps) oh, guess what? I'm going to get a ton of them. I don't want to, I don't, no, no. I find that if you start to feel the love towards the growth. And yeah, do we grow during challenges? Yes. But I'll tell you what, you fall in love with the growth that you're becoming. You look for the higher principles in that. You start to do number one and number two, the matre and the karuna. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing Anybody who's really a good little Buddhist and wants to tell me how to pronounce these even better, let me know. I'm open. You have that kindness. You have that wonderful understanding the suffering, understanding that you have to go through that opening of the flower, and you understand that happiness is in the happiness, and the growth, to me, is happiness. So this this little obstacle I'm going through, I get a higher perspective. I get a higher perspective. I look at it in a different way. And you know what? That flower opens up in different ways of doing things, in different paths that I can take. But gosh, to think it's just a mountain I have to climb and that it's hard. Ah, no, it's how we look at things. 
Love is inside of us, folks. We just have to open to it. All right. So with this true love, I want to finish up the last little one that I love. Okay. So the Buddhists say, oh gosh, up e- okay, freedom. <laughs> I'm not even going to try the Buddhist word. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> We're just going to say it. Freedom. I've always known it as freedom. All right. And I'm sorry for my ignorance on that. But freedom. Freedom. What? Oh, my gosh. This is this is my song. What is it? Freedom to be you. Freedom to have your own own little world of love for yourself, which we're going to bring that in because that's so important. Freedom to, to be the person that you aren't meant to be, to have the interests that bring you alive on your very own, to be you, that freedom. And you know what? When you have that freedom and then you bring it in to that love, it adds because it's a satisfaction within. It's, we're all, it comes with this incredible understanding that we are all connected, but we are not all the same. And we need space. We are our own person. That's why you can't change someone else. I can't change my mother, never could. I can't change my kids, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't change my mother either. She taught me valuable lessons, even though we uh, didn't always get along. And I wouldn't change someone I was in love with because that's them. But I also don't want them to change me. (laughs) I love who I am. And I love that freedom. And I feel comfortable in that freedom because That is me, and that is them. And when I am with someone else, I don't expect them to become a mini-me. I don't expect them to satisfy my, maybe a void I have in myself. They're not there to fill my void. My mother's not there to fill a warm void in me. My, My kids, well... Lord, help me. They're all flying. So I hope they're not filling a void in me (laughs) because it would be a void. But my but the person that I have in my life is not filling a void in me. That's my job. But they are also not I'm not filling a void in them. We come together as unique individuals who have this incredible freedom and confidence and belief in who we are. And that brings me to one of the most special loves in the whole wide world. And I think if we all, we really should teach it in schools. You know, schools, uh, I don't know. I don't know what, I've seen my kids go through schools and, and it is different. And Lord knows, I had the extreme in schools, I have to say. I had the really structured, you will learn this, you know, kind of Hitler move. You will learn it, and you will learn it the way we tell you to learn it. And that was when I was in the Catholic schools, and I didn't do well with there. And then I was thrown into an experimental school because I wasn't doing well in that one. It raised all my little defiant personality. So back I went to this experimental school where, oh, you just learn at your own rate. (laughs) But you got to complete it by the end of the year. And you just get your little folder and you start working. And, uh, and oh, my gosh, I, I just floundered. I didn't know what to do. It took me almost a year to get used to that one. But I have to say, I went through a process with that where I had to look at myself squarely. I had to see what I was made up. I was 10 years old and there was other stuff going on too. You know, new school, the bully didn't like me, all that kind of stuff. I had to really go through, who am I at 10? And I had to really start right then and there 
to say, my gosh, I'm kind of alone here and I got to love myself. I'm okay, no matter what anybody says, no matter what the nuns say, no matter what the bully says, no matter what the teacher says, I, I'm okay. I'm creative. I love animals. I love science. I love spirit. I'm, I love poetry. I'm okay. And that set me off on a journey to discover me. We don't always do that. Buddha says, and I love this, you yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, de- deserves your love and affection. You yourself deserve your love and affection. I know there's some diehards out there. I know you're there. Those people who say, oh, come on, get away from all this lovey-dovey stuff. Just do it. I know, because I grew up in that kind of family. (laughs) And I know you're out there. But I'll tell you something. You just do it. You just do it. You just are always out there doing that hardness. Just feel that. Just do it. That hardness that you're creating, that insurmountable no moving is detrimental to love that right there oh you gotta do what you gotta do just get over yourself will you all these comments ugh, they are all they are all keeping you away from love you must open to the love for yourself Treat yourself as the precious soul that you are. Heal the parts of you that need healing. Have patience. Treat yourself like the child. I love this. And this is something I want to help people who are trying to go through that healing and that love for yourself. It's the biggest thing. Because if you can heal yourself and love yourself, then, oh my gosh, you can create any love in your life. And here it is. It's actually Louise Hay. I, I'm not going to own it because, you know, I'm a spiritual curator. I gather from everything. And this is one. Louise Hay had a wonderful idea for inner child work, which I work with people with inner child work all the time. Healing that child inside, you're healing the soul. So, of course, I work with that. But she has this idea where you get a picture of yourself where you are whatever, 10 or, or wherever that hurt was. And you put it on your mirror. And every time you start to do something like criticize yourself, um, look past yourself and not, not honor your own feelings, look at that child and think, would you do that to that child? I love that because it takes that wounded little soldier inside, that wounded little child, And you start to embrace it and love it and heal that hurt. You actually start to love you. And here's the biggest secret that people don't always understand. That when you love yourself, then all of a sudden you are giving a hundred times more than you ever would have if you had that protective wall and was hoarding your feelings inside. It takes work to hoard those feelings. And once you heal and you can just love and give yourself that love and affection, all you want to do is share it. There's a greater understanding. Oh my gosh, ask me to be kind have kindness, oh, I'll grow with it because I'm healed. Uh, Ask me to have that happiness in every moment, yes. Ask me to help someone who's suffering, I'm there. And oh my gosh, yes, I'm free because no hurt or pain is holding me back. Once I become complete, And really, the journey of love is all about how we learn to love ourselves. 
So it really does come down to loving ourselves first. And that brings me over to what we call subjective love. That gives us subjective love. What is that? Well, that in the Tao is the expression of the whole state of lovingness. There are no ulterior motives, no objects of material value to be acquired. All of a sudden, the person who experiences this type of love is open to it in all of its forms, in all of its glorious spectrums, without expectation, without demands, with total happiness and feeling that exhilaration inside. And yes, you do. You feel... You, it's so funny. We say subjective. The Tao's say it so formally. Subjective. <laughs> but it's anything but subjective. It is this inc- it's not removal, in other words. It is enveloping. Enveloping the whole experience for what it is and loving it for what it is. That's what happens when you start to love yourself. I really think that we should teach this more in schools. I tried to do it with my kids. They still ended up with a little bit of residue from the schools in the expectation and the demands. And they're not like perfect. Nobody's perfect because then you wouldn't be on a journey. You know, we're here to evolve. So they got their own journey to go on. But for me, I tried to to instill that feeling of having affection for yourself, that you will be okay, that you are this mad, you are this perfection walking on earth. And yes, you have a journey, but you have perfection running through you. Tap into it. It's the energy of oneness. It's the energy of the divine. Tap into it. Believe in yourself. Have affection. Have caring about yourself. If you're sick, you're sick. If you're well, you're well. If you can't do this work, then have enough respect for yourself to go and find the answers from someone. Don't just struggle. That's worthless. Find the answers. This is all loving yourself. Feeling that you are enough. You are all. And that's what gives you that subjective Tao type of love. And it's an incredible place to be. It is the most accepting love. If we're going to strive for any love, even in our relationships, would you still get that passion, that fire? Oh gosh, yes, even more so. Because nothing, nothing is in the way. You're not going to sit there and say, oh, but I really expected him to bring roses. (laughs) You're not going to do that. It's, oh my gosh, flowers. You brought me flowers. I am so honored. There is that vulnerability that is just oozing from you. That's subjective love. And then if you really practice that, oh boy, you might just enter into another kind of love that I love incredibly and it's the highest love in the whole wide world it's becoming love becoming love and I think that is the love of divinity that's that unconditional love it is the experience of our total humanity stripped of Every shed of, evola- of, of ugh, how do I want to say it? Aggression, civilization, expectation, um, obligation. <laughs> Not that you don't do what, what you feel you should do, but the heaviness is gone. 
Because when you become love, you gain this incredible understanding that that's all there is. My gosh, if we had a whole world that understood that becoming love was the goal, to become really one with spirit, to truly, truly start to reach what is expected, that unconditional love that we all talk about but hardly ever experience, to truly embody that and become it, Think of the world we would have. Think of the incredible caring to love without any intention of what I'm going to get from that person. It might put capitalism on its on its head (laughs) because it would be more about us living with a state of incredible community, a sense of really caring, not gossiping, not trying to better anybody because they're perfect as they are. They're all on a journey. They might not be on my journey. That's all right. It's all they're not supposed to be. And that life is where it's supposed to be. Where do we want to go from there? Isn't that an interesting love? To be able to have that love, and it takes It takes starting to love yourself. And when people come because they are love and they come together, it is whole. It is unified. It is, it is, gosh, it's that land. I see rainbows. (laughs) I know that's so trite, but that's what it's like. It's like, and it's powerful because it's pure love. It's the kind of love of you see with relationships. You know, the couple that can finish each other's sentences. It's a deep love. It's the kind of couple that they can look across the room and they know exactly what each other's thinking. It's that kind of love that you see with a mother and and a child or a dad and a child that is just, there's a, in that kind of love, you see a freedom, but that they're just, they trust each other so much. It's that kind of love that even though you might not know a person, that you just, that person knows that they can always talk to you. You'll, they, they tell you their story. Becoming love. It is the ultimate love. But you know, That exhilaration, that wonderful feeling of vitality, is it in that kind of love? Yes, it is. And I have to say that passion, (laughs) that's another important quality. It is, it is interesting. I have to say, I tried to look, I did a lot of research on this stuff right here, this passion stuff. (laughs) Not that I don't feel it. Of course I feel it. But I wanted to see what institutions thought about it or modalities and religions. And boy, is that a mixed bag, I have to say. But why do we do anything? Because of passion. Because of that electrical, wonderful, exuberant feeling of passion, that chemistry, that just, oh my gosh, I can't get enough. Oh my gosh, I want to just live alive. And I think that kind of love is precious. And and if you come with working on yourself, caring about yourself, taking the time to show that affection to yourself and be able to open to the vulnerability Man, guys, that's when that passionate love that we love to celebrate on Valentine's Day, that love comes alive. 
like you've never seen it before. Because you have nothing in the way. Nothing. That's when you can give yourself to another person and say, here I am. You can have all of me. And you say it without that little twinge in your neck. (laughs) You say it with total abandonment and surrender. And that's when you get that incredible rush. That it's, it's like a real rush. So start to explore these spectrums of love. Start to, to extend the kindness. Start with the Buddhist. Just start with the kindness. Don't forget yourself. Start looking at yourself, saying, what do I need to heal in this? What do I need to show myself on the suffering? If you start with yourself and you take away all that boundary stuff, you know, the boundaries, the walls, the hurt, it all stems from hurt and insecurity. If you start to look at those with yourself, then my gosh, you will be able to open to others in that way. And you will be able to celebrate love and have that wonderful subjective love and then even move slowly in your journey into that becoming love. And every relationship you have, you will see love all around you. And that special person you have, it'll be like freaking firecrackers every day. And... I hate to tell you, but that's what life is truly about. When I say there is only love, there is only love. But it starts with you. All right, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the spectrum of love and have fun with it. It's a wonderful, awesome journey. I told you it would be. So check out Soul Manifesto. These are the things I love to explore, even in my wonderful group. These are the things I love to help you do. I love you to start to open up to that incredibleness of you. Because when I open up, or when we open up that incredibleness in you, it's not I, I can't do it alone. But when we start to open that up in this incredible safe environment, this sacred space, of Soul Manifesto, and some I'm doing a Hello Soul program, and I'm opening up people into their soul, living in this, in, what is the soul? Love. And all we're doing is breaking down the boundaries that prevent us from being in that love. That's what it is. All divinity is love. So if you're interested, check out Soul Manifesto, and check out Hello Soul, and, and really, you know, message me on there. Say, hey, I'm interested in this Hello Soul program because I would love to help you with that. And um, it's a four-week program right now, one hour a week. But, of course, you are doing all the exploring during the week. (laughs) And then we come back together. But I always am there, always there to help you on this because I know it's a journey. I'm there to hold your hand. I'm there to help you achieve what you want to achieve. That's what it's all about, sharing the love. That's what it is. Okay, everyone. Remember, spirit is love. Yes. And when we can finally open ourselves to that wonderful, exhilarating, content-filled, and peaceful love, we are living spirit every day. Namaste, my dear friends. Namaste. This has been Magical Moments with Elena, featuring Elena Chapman. If you missed an episode, download it now on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, CastBox, Deezer, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast platform. Learn more online at soulmanifesto.com. Podcasts by Federated Media.